Good morning. Welcome to St. Peter's. Happy Easter. All right, so we've got a tradition here. We're going to say it throughout, and so it may be new to you, or maybe we just all, it's good to have a refresher on Easter through this whole season, the next six weeks. We're going to say, I'll say, He is risen, and that's our cue, your cue to say, He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And Alleluia means Lord, like praising the Lord, basically. And so there will be times I'll say that. What's funny is sometimes I say, He is risen, and I didn't mean it. And then you, you see the people who are like, primed. They're ready, right? They get it. Uh, so just go ahead. Proclaim it. This is good news. This is a good news day. And today is, is truly the celebration of when the world changed, when life changed, when our stories changed. And so that obviously is what we're talking about. Today the show is Jesus, right? He is the one. He is the one who gives you life. And if you walk away with anything, it, it just that. I do want to share a few things with you because, you know, we have the joy of Jesus. And so uh, here's what's going on as we try and share that joy with others and live it out. So I want to invite you to about three things today uh, before we get rolling today and praising the Lord. Uh, first uh, is that we have a middle school youth group starting in just a couple weeks on April 14th, and I, I, I am excited for this. We had a lock-in. If you know what a, lock, a half lock-in, if you know what a lock-in is, it's when you... Apparently back in ye olden days, it's when you locked the kids in, which seems like a fire safety problem. <laughs> so nowadays we just tell them, please don't run away or your parents will kill us. And so we had them in and they've been begging us again and again, can you do a lock-in? But everyone who volunteered is like, man, I'm still not caught up in energy from that experience of being here till midnight playing games. But we want to not just have fun, we want to also mold and shape people, right? We are, we are disciples, people who learn. And so that is the goal of this youth group. Yeah, we're going to have fun together. Yeah, we're going to have community. And, and these young Christians are also going to learn about Jesus and how they, how you are leaders of the faith. And so it starts at 5.30 on April 14th. It goes till 7, dinner provided. And this is for 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. And uh, we've had a few, uh, like, ninth graders who are saying like, hey, what about me? It's like, well, you're coming. If you want to join in, let us know, all right? But sometimes the high schoolers are looking at fifth graders going, you know, you know, you get the vibe. All right, uh, second, uh, we need your help, and we, we want your help for two things, right? Our goal is for Jesus's word, this good news to impact the world, both nearby and far away. So I'll start with the far away one. In just over a month, we are sending a team of eight people to meet with some others. We're going to Guatemala, and we are going to be trained here in the coming weeks to help put eyeglasses with the proper prescription, that's, I think, the trick, on faces of people where they don't usually get access to these. Now, what we're doing here locally is we're collecting eyeglasses. So there's like a blue bin that I've had to empty twice this morning. And what we are doing is we started with a goal a month ago of let's get 300 glasses and now uh, the goal is 3,000 glasses because we're at 1,300 something. So if you can think of a way to get glasses without stealing them, like don't grab your neighbors, all right? They, I need these. But if you can get them, ask work, ask friend, ask school. We'll collect them. They will go around the world to literally every continent that has people in it. And so that's something we can do here. Now, we're also planning on how do we bless the world near us, right? How do we bless Big Rapids or maybe you're from Canadian Lakes or wherever you're from, God has put you, literally you. He has uniquely put you there to bless people. And so we are getting ready for right around Pentecost, right? About 40 days after today, we're going to be launching groups to go out for one day and serve the people around them. And if you hear the word serve and you're like, man, serving is hard. Like, I can't plan an entire event. Well, neither can I. Or, or man, I, I can't, like, plan an entire summer program or something. No, that's not it. How do we do the things we're already doing to bless the people we already meet? And so I, I have one of the papers out here, but it's on that table right next to the eyeglass drop-off. There's two things there. There's one, a document. that uh, This is, like, questions to help you think, man, how has God uniquely made and placed you to bless the people around you? Some of the ideas on here are like, man, maybe I'm really good at, at like just visiting, playing games, and I can go to a nursing home, a, a care center, and I can play there to help people who often are lonely. Or, man, I'm really good at helping cars. Maybe I could just offer to my neighbors to change their oil because, man, that sounds like a big help for someone. So how can we love and bless the people around us? 
Now, if you're like not an ideas person, you're like, hey, I'll join in and help someone, cool. On that table, right as you leave to the left, there's going to be like a log jam as you sign up. And I'm sorry, that's just the flow of people. There's sign-ups there. You can write your name, write your contact, and then say, hey, I'm willing to like lead and organize a group, and I can help you come up with ideas. Or you can just say, hey, I'm putting my name down. Help me connect with a group. I want to just love some people. All right, so those are the things. We're going to have our youth group. We're going to gather glasses and bless the world with, with hopefully some eyesight. And three, we're going to bless our neighbors near us. So go ahead, check out that table as you leave. Grab some of the paperwork. There's signs for glasses collection. There's all this good stuff so that we can go out in the name of Jesus. All right, that stuff gets me excited, but it's Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And so we're going to receive from God and we're going to praise him. If you'd please stand and join me. See what a morning, gloriously bright, with the dawning of hope in Jerusalem. Folded the grave clothes, tomb filled with light, as the angels announced Christ is risen. See God's salvation plan, wrought in love, born in pain, paid in sacrifice, fulfilled in Christ. from the dead See Mary weeping Where is he laid As in sorrow she turns From the empty tomb Hears a voice speaking the master the lord raised to life again this voice that spans the years speaking life stirring hope bringing peace to us will sound till he appears for he lives christ is risen from the dead the Father, ancient of days, through the Spirit who calls faith with certainty, honor and blessing, glory and praise to the King, crowned with power and authority. has conquered and we shall reign with him for he lives Christ is risen from the dead and we are raised with him death is dead love has won Christ has conquered and we shall reign with him for he risen from the dead. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we confess our sins to God, our Father, with the words of the first commandment. What is the first commandment? You shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. We take a moment here today before we receive the good news to reflect on how we need the good news. How have we failed to fear, love, and trust in God above all things?
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And now with that, our confession, we hear the good news. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I am chosen in Jesus. I am forgiven in Jesus. I am loved in Jesus. Amen. We now come together to pray. We're going to use Psalm 16 today to pray using Scripture. So if you would please read and pray along with me. Lord, you are my portion and my cup of blessing. You hold my future. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I will bless the Lord who counsels me. Even at night when my thoughts trouble me, I always let the Lord guide me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My body all rests securely. For you will not abandon me to Sheol. You will not allow your faithful one to see decay. You reveal the path of life to me. In your presence is abundant joy. At your right hand are eternal pleasures. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Brothers, sisters, friends, the Lord be with you and also with you. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you this day because Christ is indeed risen. We can say alleluia and praise your name. For our sins do not hinder our life with you. You have forgiven us through Jesus Christ. Lord, refresh us with this good news today. Disrupt the evil in this world. And Lord, send us out as proclaimers of the good news. For Lord, you have given us not just life, but participation in your mission. To you, Lord, we say, Amen. Amen. If you would please be seated. We now go to the scriptures today. And our first reading comes to us from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. And the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. 
It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today our second reading comes to us from the New Testament, specifically the book uh, of the first book of Corinthians chapter 15. And here's what Paul writes. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received. That Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. That he was buried. That he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time. Most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles. Unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them. Though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or, or they, so we preached, and so you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now I'd invite you to stand as we go to our gospel reading today out of respect for our Lord. Today the Holy Gospel is from Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Come awake, come awake, 
Come and rise them from the grave. Beneath the weight of all our sin, you bow to none but heaven's will. No scheme of hell, no scoffer's crown, no burden great can hold you down in strength. You reign forever, your church proclaim. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling over death by death. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. Christ is risen from the dead, we are one with him again. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. God's grace, his mercy, and his peace be to you. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. That is the truth of today. That is the truth. And today, I, I want to share with you how unexpected truths disrupt our life. And there was nothing more unexpected to broken hearts, to hopeless people, to broken sinners than what we just said together, that he is indeed risen and that there is reason to praise God. Alleluia. Now, this unexpected truth disrupts all of life, not just lives, but, but life itself. But we're, we're pretty accustomed as humans to actually having this sort of thing happen to us. Right now, sometimes it's real little. You discover something that's true. It, it has a temporary disruption. Sometimes they're bigger, right? Now, um, I have a map here because I'm a, a nerd, as we call them. Um, what was it? We, I was just sharing with friends that I saw on, like, I don't know, TikTok or something, that it said, you know you're in your mid-30s when you start, like, uh, wall climbing, birding, and liking maps. Sweet. Um, nailed it. But see, this map, I, I love this map. This is from a guy, a Frenchman named Jean Jean Vier, which is the most French name I think I've ever heard. Right, Jean Jean Vier, and he made this map in 1762. So before the U.S. Revolution, before our independence, all that, but not too long. And I love this map because if you're looking at it, hopefully you can see it over there, where we normally think of like you know Oregon, Idaho, Washington. Can you see it? There's a giant body of water. And John wasn't crazy. Well, he was wrong, but he wasn't crazy. 
He was doing what people had been doing for 200 years at this point. They had heard stories, and they were certain, absolutely certain, no doubt about it, that there was, in fact, a giant body of water where we, where we now know there is nothing besides mountains, desert, and a whole lot of pine trees. Right? They were absolutely certain. This certainty led them to go looking for a thing called the Northwest Passage. Because, I mean, look, you got this big body of water there. All it takes is one good river, and you, you got it. They were certain. They had heard stories from Native American tribes who had told them, yep, big water. Like, huge water just right over there. And they're like, sweet, big water. And they had heard from earlier explorers. They didn't ask them to, like, bring proof because you can't, like, you know, take a picture and be like, check this. They had heard stories from explorers like, yep, big water up there. You just got to sail right up, right up the edge. And it led to maps like this. They called it the Sea or the Bay of the West. This is indeed what led to the Lewis and Clark expedition. They were so certain there's water over there in 1805 that President Jefferson told them not to go find out if there's water. He told them to go find the water. There's a way, go get it. And uh, it didn't work because unexpected truth disrupts life, right? And so Lewis and Clark set out. There was no Sea of the West. There was no Northwest Passage. Despite their certainty, what they found is they, is they canoed up these rivers up into like the, the, I mean, people joke about northern Michigan being cold, but they went into like true cold. And they get there, and they ask the local natives, hey, how do we, the river's ended, how do we get to water? And you know what they told them? They didn't go, hey, big water up there. They said, hey, that's a whole lot of mountains, guys. Like, that's a lot, hundreds of miles of mountains. And so they had to literally change the way they were acting, put the canoes down, let go of the paddle, and learn how to hike. They found an unexpected truth. And for them, it disrupted their whole lives. I mean, their mission was completely disrupted. You know, to their credit, they made it over, they made it back, and they reported, no, there, there's no waterway. One of those men from the Corps of Discovery, he, he would actually take his own life, and, and we're not sure what that connection is, but man. And it changed how America did politics, what we did. I mean, next thing you know, 100 years later, we've had to look south, and we built this canal through Panama, because there was no water. That unexpected truth disrupted pretty broad assumptions about life. They threw out the maps, look south, change our politics, everything. Sometimes things are that big, right? Northwest Passage big. But there's never been a disruption bigger than what we have spent this morning saying. Right, let's say it again. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We just said Christ is indeed risen, and that is worthy of alleluia and praising God. And that disrupts everything, because it is the unexpected truth. Now, our gospel reading today, I, I, I love the version written in Mark. And, and if you ever, like, if you open a Bible and you go to Mark, there's a line right after verse 8 where we stopped because some of the earliest known, like, writings of this and, like, the ancient Greek stuff, it, it didn't have that. So we're going to just, we're just going to stop at 8 and let it be. And we're going to let it be because it's kind of awkward. Did you hear how that gospel, as far as we know, ended? They leave saying nothing because they're terrified. They were disrupted. I mean, think about it. These women, right, uh, three days later by the Jewish count, they've watched their teacher, their rabbi, the one they know is sent by God, and he died as any Roman criminal dies. So three women gather some spices. They didn't even have enough time to properly give respect to this guy's body. So they're going to do it now. And they think the biggest disruption they're going to have is the fact that there's a very large stone in the way, like a big door. How do, we, how do we get it out? So they gather the spices, they go, and whoa, the, it, it's moved. The stone's already moved. Okay, start running through your mind what could be going on. Maybe someone already broke in. Maybe they took the body. Maybe the Romans are messing around. Maybe it's the guards. I mean, okay, they stick their head in and look, and there's 
no body, no Jesus, but there is a messenger of God sitting there, kind of just waiting for him. That's already pretty disruptive. And then he says this. Hey, <laughs> good morning. Don't be afraid. I know this is all terrifying, and I'm like, you know, heavenly. But you seek Jesus of Nazareth, right? Yeah, the one you watched killed on a cross, literally crucified to death, stabbed in the side, that guy? Yeah, no, he's, he's not here, though. There is no body. There's no longer a dead man here because, well, there's actually no longer a dead man. He's not just gone, he's alive. And, and here's the thing, I need you to go tell everyone. Go tell Peter, tell the disciples, get the gang together. Let them know Jesus is going to show up and he's going to talk to you. You're going to see him in just a bit. Toodaloo. Whatever toodaloo actually means, right? He, he toodalooed them. That is more than just the changing of plans for your day. Like they had said, okay, Sunday morning, here we go. What are you up to? Well, I don't know. My plans changed. I went to like find a body and it's just like, turns out he's alive. So I don't know. I guess I'm going to go take a nap or something. No, their entire being is being churned up by good news. Right? We can be churned up by bad news. We've had announcements in our lives We've heard news, we've received it. I mean, just this week, uh, I, I, I woke up to my friends texting each other because one of them is a pastor in downtown Baltimore. And they were texting, man, how does that impact you? And of course, I'm like, how does what? Hop on the news and you see what happened, right? Bridge gone, people dead. And he says, he's, he's, he's a true Baltimorean, he's a native. And he goes, I guess my commute gets longer. But he works downtown. Their life got disrupted by bad news. But wait, wait, hold on. Jesus is alive. That's, that's good news. But it's still disruptive to everything they thought. Because he's not just gone. This unexpected truth that Jesus was dead, crucified in a tomb, and now is alive, that's good news. But it disrupted everything they knew. Everything they thought was true. Because they had been warned, actually. Like, Jesus had told them to expect this. And, and that's where we get things with, like, Peter, right? Peter saying, no, you will never get hurt. And Jesus has to tell him, no, that's the words of Satan. I must do this. So Jesus had warned them, and even the scriptures had told them, God needs a sacrificial lamb to cover the sins of the whole world. He needs one perfect lamb to die for all broken people. But this wasn't on their radar. I mean, who actually expects it to be true that he calls the shot? I'm going to die and I'll see you again three days later. God saving through death. I mean, it's all through the scriptures, but to witness it, their life is disrupted. And it's good news that disrupts our lives. Good news that says you get to live forever too. Good news that says your sins are forgiven by him. Good news that says there is now a way for you into the family of God, though we are broken and we sin. Now, for those disciples, right, let's just kind of rest with them in this weird reading of Mark, the last, like, mini chapter. They leave and they are terrified, confused, scared, disrupted. But they realize that the scriptures were true. We're told at a few times in the Gospel of John that it wasn't until later that they looked back at what had happened. Like we saw last Palm Sunday last week, it wasn't until later they looked back and saw, oh, those were the scriptures being lived out. Okay, now this unexpected truth is playing itself out. We see it. The scriptures are true. But it would go on to continue to disrupt them. We go into the book of Acts as, the, as the Jesus teaches them. And the church grows and the spirit comes and people are baptized into new life. And their disruption continues because this has ripples through all things. Right? They had assumed that it was just Jews who could be saved. Right? The blood of some certain ancestors. That's what will get you in. Nope. Disrupted. 
all people can be saved by Jesus. And again, they should have known, but man, that's, that's a worldview change, isn't it? We actually just heard it, right? As we were reading Isaiah, did you hear the first thing we said? All people, all people get the good news of Jesus Christ. They were disrupted. They were used to the Jewish law. You have to be perfect enough, be good enough, make it over the bar or at least shoot for it and hope that some sacrifices will cover your butt, right? Uh, No, disrupt that whole thinking because of Jesus. Jesus instead tells them, you can't be perfect. I am. So instead, be forgiven of your imperfections. That becomes the new message. Not do, 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 but be and receive is the good news of disruption. And the disciples, probably like most of us, most people, had thought that their lives were the most important thing. And even that gets disrupted. Nope. The ultimate disruption for those disciples is that Jesus matters most that you value him and his gift even more than our own life. And through him, you will gain his eternal life. They found that out. All but one of those disciples died in the name of Jesus proclaiming. Now, most of us don't do that, but we give up ourselves. Right? Christ must increase, I must decrease. All of it's upturned. All of it's disrupted by the unexpected truth that Jesus really did die and he did indeed, alleluia, rise from the dead. And that's how we end with Mark's gospel. We're disrupted. We're left questioning, but we get to see the whole story, right? We get that 2020 vision of, Lord, what does it look like to go back? And so we get to ask ourselves, with all the information, all the scriptures, all the story, the important question. And I'll tell you where this question came from, all right? We were at a, like, leadership thing, my wife and I, and the lady was, uh, who, or one of our friends, Jen, we were doing devotions, trying to make sure that we could help church workers be healthy and impact the lives of those people they have. And she read Psalm 23, um, in a specific translation that kind of, kind of flips it, it stays the same, but it starts off this way, the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. And she paused right there, first one. And she looked at us and said, what if that were true? Wait, hold on, I know it's true. Like logically, I know it's true. God has given me everything I need. But by her asking, what if it were true, already knowing the answer, it made me stop and think, wait, it is true. Think of all the ways that that truth disrupts my assumptions because I live in a way as a broken person that I assume it's not true. So I'm going to take Jen's question because she is a wise and cool person. And I want to ask you this. Maybe. I can see it on my screen. I can say it out loud, all right? What if it were true? What if everything we've been saying, indeed, alleluia, he is risen, what if it were true? Now, don't hear me as the pastor, because I I like being here, and that's worth firing me if I said, maybe it's not true. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm saying, let's actually wrestle with that. What if it were true? What are the implications of what we have been saying all morning, this good news? Man, that would be an unexpected truth for a lot of people in the world, for our own hearts, right? For us at times, that is an unexpected truth. Man, that would just disrupt everything. Jeez, it, it would disrupt our own sense of self and identity. Where being a sinner, being broken, being imperfect as we are, is not the scariest thing you'd hear today. Because there's an answer. All of a sudden, being broken means also getting to be saved, to be a broken person who is saved, a saint and a sinner at the same time. That feels good. There's an answer from Jesus there. Instead, the scariest thing would be trying to make it on my own, trying to be good enough or at least better than like someone over here. Man, if Jesus really rose, then, then there's forgiveness. 
And that truth would start to disrupt shame and guilt and the condemnation we share. If Jesus really was a Savior, if it were really true that he was the Savior, that truth would disrupt our very being, right? Our life. It would give us a new life. It would mean that the promise Jesus gives, that he says, when you are baptized in the name of your God, you take on a new identity. You receive my spirit, you get faith. That would change everything. It would change our relationship up with our Father. No longer would it be a perfect God and broken people who need to be kept apart. We would be with him. And we would have a new identity together as his body, as a family, broken and maybe not sharing the key, all things in common, but sharing the key thing in common, that we are saved. That truth would disrupt our being in the world. And shoot, if, if this were true, what we keep saying, if it were true that Jesus really did rise from the dead, that would even disrupt the way we think about church and religion and, and faith, what it's all about. Not just traditions, habits, buildings, and obligations, but rather those things in service to the greatest thing. That we would be gathered people of God. Sons and daughters would be your new being. Gathered around good news and, and shoot, it would mean that the church is where people who are broken gather to be forgiven and share good news to one another. That would disrupt what we think this community of churches is all about. Well, there is good news, right? And you're going to say it with me. Ready? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. It is true. It is true. It disrupts everything for the better. This is good news that changes everything. If you are baptized and your trust is in Jesus, then brothers and sisters, this Easter is to be reminding for us, to be disruptive again in our lives, to keep our eyes on Jesus, not ourselves. He is good for our sake. He is your Savior. He died and rose to give you life. Lord, may, may you continue to disrupt us. And if you have not been baptized, then I have great news God gives you the promise that today you can be his people. Let's talk afterwards. Let your life be disrupted out of death into the life of Jesus Christ. Take on that new identity. Take on freedom. Disrupt the guilt that we feel. Now, I can think of no other way to leave it than let's share the good news with one another one more time. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. And now I'd invite you to stand. In, in, here at St. Peter's, we have an active participation in worship, and so this is you using the Apostles' Creed and me joining you to proclaim to one another what we believe. Let's hear the whole story of God's good news. If you would please say it with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Right, leave. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, we pray to you today because you are good to us. Lord, we are not perfect. 
We are sinners. We are broken in a broken world, and you have loved us perfectly by sending your son to die, but not just die, to rise. So that, Lord, as you promise in your scriptures that we who are baptized and given faith in your Holy Spirit, we would die and rise with him to new life now forever. Lord, keep us in that disruptive reality of Jesus for our sake so that we don't become our own gods or seek our own way. And Lord, send us out on your mission proclaiming the goodness of what you have done through Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, we pray for the work and gathering of all of us people here at St. Peter's. Lord, help us to love one another, to be the church, to, to live out and forgive one another as we love and serve our community. Lord, as we continue to search for hiring and calls and we extend job offers and all this, Lord, we know it's your will. We put it in your hands. Lord, we are excited to see what you are doing. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, we lift up to you prayers on our hearts and on our minds, those, those things that even weigh our, our spirits and our shoulders down of all who are in need. For everyone engaged in the healing process of cancer, for the hospitalized, the homebound, and Lord, for everyone you hear right now, that groaning in our hearts, Lord, help those people. You are their good Lord. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, we pray for your mission around the world, far from here. So Lord, we pray for the Heine family and all the missionaries we support, but especially them in Guinea. Lord, bless all missionaries with safety. Let their word be fruitful. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, we pray for all those here in town at Ferris. Lord, let that Easter disruption of good news encounter everyone, that they would be brought into faith, that they would hear that their sins are forgiven in the name of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, we pray for those who serve and protect us, for they are gifts that you have given to us. So we pray for all of our military personnel here and around the world. Please keep them safe and help them be your hand of, of kindness, love, caring, and justice to the world. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, we pray for the work you do through our school here at St. Peter's. Connect us with the people that, that you want to be in this building each and every day, receiving the good news, receiving the love of, of Christians. Lord, allow them to come that we might bless them with the good news of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, Father, we ask you to hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. If you please be seated. Uh, we take this time here at St. Peter's, we the people of God that he's gathered here, we take this time to worship him in another way. We give back to him what he has first given to us that it might support our mission and our offerings. So we give our offerings here physically. We also, you can go online and give that same way to support the same mission. This is our teamwork together, our sacrifice to God. But if you're new here at St. Peter's, I'd like to draw your attention. In front of you, there's these white square cards, our connect cards. But if you grab a white card and write your name on it, a way to contact you, I'll get a hold of you. And that's our offer to like, hey, we would love to follow Jesus right alongside you. And we would love to be on his mission with you. So if you do that, I'd love to hear your story. Grab a cup of coffee or something like that and get to know you. You can take those, give them to me afterwards, or you can drop it in the baskets that we're about to pass around here in just a moment. Thank you for being here, especially if you're new with us. Thank you for connecting, and thank you, brothers and sisters, for your generosity.
you would please stand. We now go, one of the promises Jesus said is, I will be with you, I will give you my body and blood, and so we take this time to receive that, because Jesus says this is for the forgiveness of our sins. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, it is truly good, right, and beneficial for us to thank you at all times and in all places for the uncountable blessings you give to us and to your creation. We thank and praise you most of all because you have had mercy on us by giving us your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, so that we would not perish but have eternal life. Holy Father, grant us your Spirit so that by your grace we may come to the meal Jesus sets for us and believe that Jesus' body and blood are given to us today for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord our God, because of this gift, we praise and thank you. Amen. Scripture tells us that in communion, Jesus comes to us in a promise. He says that the bread is also his body. The wine is also his blood. This promise is given so that we may trust that we receive forgiveness of our sins as we eat the communion meal. We approach this table as repentant yet forgiven sinners. We gather as one body with one belief and we come to this blessing remembering the words of Jesus, the Savior. I want to just take a moment and explain because I, I, I know it was just over a decade ago I was new to the church and so we truly believe that scripture says that Jesus says this is my body and blood. If you ask me how I get to go, God said and when he says things happen, miracles happen. But he says this is for the forgiveness of our sins. And so we invite you to come forward and partake and just kind of follow and you'll get the gist of how it works if you believe that you are a sinner and you want your sins forgiven. And if you believe that this is his body and blood miraculously given for you, then it will be good. If you've not been baptized or, or maybe none of this makes any sense to you, that's okay too. You're welcome to sit there, watch, observe, sing along. If you'd like to, you can also come up and, and just kind of signal to me by crossing your arms that says, hey, I, I'm, I'm here and I would like to pray. And I'll pray with you real quick. But what I hope everyone takes away today is that this is Jesus for you. And here's how we know it. Let's go to his words from Scripture. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated.
Thank you. 
come to destroy our sin forgiving alleluia jesus is living alleluia for three long days the grave did its worst until its strength by god was dispersed he who gives life did death undergo and in its conquest his might did show let us sing praise to him with endless joy death's fearful sting he has come to destroy our sin forgiving alleluia jesus is living alleluia for the Jesus, who is not here, see for yourselves the tomb is all bare, only the grave cloths are lying there. Let us sing praise to him with endless joy, death's fearful sting he has come to destroy, our sin forgiving, alleluia, Jesus is living. Spread the news, he's not in the grave. He has arisen this world to save. Jesus redeeming labors are done. Even the battle with sin is won. Let us sing praise to him with endless joy. Death's fearful sting he has come to destroy. Our sin forgiving, Alleluia. Jesus is living, Alleluia. Christ has arisen, He sets us free, Alleluia. To Him praises be. Jesus is living, let us all sing. He reigns triumphant, heavenly King. Let us sing praise to him with endless joy. Death's fearful sting he has come to destroy. Our sin forgiving, alleluia. Jesus is living, alleluia.
you would please stand. Hear the good news once again. Now may this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you to eternal life. Go in his peace. Amen. Let's pray. Holy Lord, we praise you and we thank you for giving us the gift of your body and your blood. May it keep us in true faith and in peace until you return to restore us in the whole world. With all of creation, with all believers, we praise you and the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. I thought we were going to do a cool thing. Now we'll do, the, we'll do a thing. It's all right. Let's sing, y'all. I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame is taken away. My pain is healed in his name, I believe, I believe. I'll raise a banner, cause my Lord has conquered the grave. My Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame is taken away. My pain is healed in his name. I believe. I believe. I'll raise the banner Amen. Amen. If you please be seated, just a few more things to share about what life is like in the kingdom with this disruptive truth. Here at St. Peter's, we want to see Jesus go to each next. That's next person, next place, next time, and he sends you. Uh, that's a little intimidating, but thankfully Jesus gives us the relationships we need. We have three that imitate Jesus. Our relationship up with our Father right? We need to be connected to him. Our relationship in with fellow disciples, right? Like people who are following Jesus. This is our team. But we got to have a relationship out with the world too. That's the whole point of the step out to serve small group is to go out and find people who may be disconnected. Maybe they just need hope. They need to be connected. So we go out to meet them. Um, every week here, I share a quick story, uh, not of what we are doing here, but what you are doing out there. And sometimes I ask permission. So if you're like, man, this is kind of intimidating. Sorry, if you give me a good story, 
I kind of share it sometimes. Sometimes I ask permission, but this week I got to hear of uh, Scott and Castine Rios. There are people here. If you come into the church or school during the week, you'll get to see Castine. And uh, I just wanted to share because here's what that, that relationship building in the kingdom looks like for them. You may have different skills. You do things differently. You have different neighbors. But they reached out to their neighbors and said, hey, um, we want to have an Easter dinner with you. Come on over to our house. And then they reached out to our college students uh, here from Ferris and said, hey, if you want to come and eat, if you're in town, now most of them left, but they, they, they've got some people. They are gathering people on Easter to celebrate and just share being together. And that is part of what the kingdom looks like. So, hey, I want to encourage you one more time as we leave today with this re- disruptive truth. Check out that table on the way out. I know it'll create like a log jam, but sign up. Let's go serve our neighbors. If you've got glasses, bring them in next week and uh, fill out the connect cards. I'd love to hear how God is using you. But here's how we end. We go to scripture one more time. I'll read this first screen. You join me on the next one, all right? Here's Ephesians 2. For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift. Not so that we would boast, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. Right? It is a gift, and then God sends us out with his work. We're going to do this screen, and then we're going to finish with our thing. Right? Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And one more time, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Have an awesome Sunday. Blessed week. See you all later.